and welcome to the third, second of our series of videos on successful grooming with Norma Headley. This is my partner for today, this is Jumbo. Today we're going to deal with mane pulling, tail pulling um, by the conventional method and also using thinning scissors. We're also going to deal with trimming of eyes, ears, whiskers and the backs of the heels and around the feet. Um, we're going to use an ordinary mane comb or a dog comb as I like to, to use. A pair of blunt ended scissors, nice and sharp, and also a pair of thinning scissors. A finer pair of uh, scissors just for getting into the last little whiskers or um, for doing the eyelashes, eyebrows. A big robust pair of scissors for trimming off the end of the tail. Vent brush to use on the, main, on the main and the tail before you start. Little face brush just to take away the hair from round the face as we trim it off. And I think that's about it really. So we're going to start with the, from the top of the mane and you need to pull just the long hairs from the end. Try not to ever pull hairs from the top of the mane because that will end up growing up straight up and you'll have a spiky fringe on the top. So you always want to take the hair from underneath. So comb in your hair through, take hold of just a few hairs at the end, push the rest of the mane back up and then, wrapping your fingers around, pull the hair out. Again, a few small hairs from the bottom. Push the back, long hair back up and pull it out. Now, if you look at the hair there that I've pulled out, you can actually see the base of the hair follicle on the end of the hair. So that's a clean, pulled hair. Sometimes when you're pulling manes, you will actually hear the hair tear. And in actual fact, it hasn't come out from the root. It's broken off. Um, that's normally the time to use the thinning scissors because it's obviously being held very tight by the root and doesn't, is not going to come out. So what happens then is you snap the hair off and that hair will then grow up straight as if you'd shaved it off so as, as a whisker would grow straight and stubbly so the the hair on the mane will grow straight and stubbly and you won't get that natural hair soft hair growing back again and and boy making sure you take the long hair and only from underneath again it's something that you need to practice try not to pull too much hair in one go so don't think that you've got um, a long flowing mane and you're going to have a short mane in one session because apart from the fact that you'll make your horse quite sore it won't ever um, look right you'll need to pull a bit, leave it for a couple of days and then pull a little bit more and again leave it for a couple of days and that way you get the mane growing back at a gradual rate rather than all growing back at the same length.
as you're working through the mane, if you just every so often run your fingers through from underneath and you'll feel where there are thicker patches or bits that, you've, that you haven't pulled quite so much hair out of. And then as you work your way through, you'll be able to level it out. So you want to try and get, end up with the mane, same length and the same density all the way around. Makes it much easier for plaiting. You'll get a much neater set of plaits, um, having a nice mane to start with. If it's all of an even length, and an even thickness all the way down. Most horses' manes are actually narrower at the top, so the actual width of the mane, the hair across the top of the neck, is quite narrow at the top. And then it gets wider as you get to the middle of the neck, and then narrow again at the bottom. So you will actually need to pull a little bit more hair out from the middle than you do from the top and the bottom. So there you can see that we've pulled the top half of the mane and it's quite a little bit shorter up here than it is down here and quite thinner. Run your fingers through there and I've, this is what I've taken out. So you really wouldn't want to take much more than that out in one session. The longer you can take over pulling the mane the better the result you'll have at the end. Try and do too much at once, you'll end up with thin patches and thick patches and end up in a terrible mess. So just pull about that amount of hair out every session. So now we're going to do the bottom half of the mane with the thinning scissors. These thinning scissors actually have a straight blade and a toothed blade. So we want to work with the straight blade at the bottom. Then it just goes through the mane much more smoothly. So we're going to work from the middle half, which we haven't pulled, down to the end, just to shorten this bit of mane to the same length as that one. And the, the, the way to use the thinning scissors is not to cut straight across like that with your first cut but to go into the mane at about 45 degrees and just to one snip and then move one snip and then move keep combing your hair through and work your way down and then you'll get an edge on your mane which looks exactly the same as it did when it was pulled so we'll start from the middle taking the blade in snip snip comb comb so you don't get a hard edge on the hair that you've cut you get a feathered edge as you would have done if you'd have pulled it don't stay in the same place all the time keep your scissors moving I don't advise that you cut right into the mane because again it grows upwards and it will look right to start with but then give it a couple of days when it starts to grow and it will push the hair up in the air on the top. So once you've done your pulling, if you just flatten the hair down, then you can just take off the long hairs. Again, don't go in and snip, snip, snip. Keep your scissors moving. As long as you keep combing and then snipping, combing and then snipping, you'll get a nice feathered edge on the end of the mane. And you do the forelock in exactly the same way, depending on your preference. Pull a little bit out and then tidy the length up 
with your scissors. And same with the forelock. So we'll just pull a little bit out to start with. Again, just a few hairs from the, the bottom. Good boy. Push the hair back up. Pull. Longer hairs. Push the hair back up. And pull. And then you can do the end of the forelock exactly the same way as we did the mane. So once you've pulled enough out, let's get rid of too much. Don't get carried away with your pulling. Always step back, have a look, do a bit. Step back and have a look. Otherwise you'll, you'll get, you end up with no mane at all. Just take it nice and slowly. Take a few ends off there. Just snipping off the last few ends just to tidy the bottom of the forelock up. There we go. So now we're going to move on to the tail. It's the same procedure as we did with the mane. Um, obviously you wouldn't pull a pony's tail if he lived out in the field or indeed a horse. Um, they need their full tails for protection against the wind and the weather. So pulling tails is really only something for um, stable kept horses. Good boy. So starting from the top we're only basically going to pull the hair from the sides of the tail and it's going to stop where the cheeks start to come away so that it just sits in the bum nice and tidy. So you wouldn't start with a full tail and end up with a pulled tail like this in one session. Your horse would end up with quite a sore tail and they probably wouldn't let you do it. Um, do be careful when you're pulling the tail. Some horses don't like it and it does hurt them. If they start to fidget around and jump about from side to side as you're trying to pull it out. Don't risk getting yourself kicked. It's not worth it. We can get exactly the same effect with the thinning scissors and when I've gone through pulling this tail with you, we're going to get Larry out and we're going to do his tail from full tail right to a, a, a pulled tail with the thinning scissors. So don't, just be careful. Don't get yourself kicked. A few hairs from the set one place moving down a few more hairs. So you're only taking, I don't know, 10, 12 hairs out at a time, not a great big fistful. So the horse usually hardly even notices you're doing it. I'm sure Jumbo would stand there and let me pull the whole lot on if I wanted to. You have to be very careful. And just every so often, have a little look into the base of the hair. The horses do bleed sometimes when you're doing this. So just be aware of that and, and don't pull too much out at once. Again, a little bit more often is much better than doing a whole load all in one go. So the same procedure all the way down the tail. Just taking it from the sides. And if you get your comb in to the side there. You can pull all that long hair up and then you can see what you've got to pull. As you can see, when you start pulling, it brings all the grease up to the top of the tail. So this is a good thing to do just before you wash it. So don't wash it and then pull it because the pores will have all tightened up on the hair follicles and you won't get the hair out. It has been said that you should do this when the horse is warm after exercise. Um, 
in my experience, it doesn't always make an awful lot of difference. So we're nearly done here down this side. So there you can see we have one side pulled and the other side still to do. So we'll get on and finish that side and then you can see the finished effect. And finally, when you've done both sides, just take a few hairs from the centre, just to even that up a little bit. You need to do most of your pulling from the side to narrow down the dock. And then just take a few more from the middle, just to even everything up. So there's our finished tail. It needs a bit of a brush now, and then a damp down with uh, a water brush and then a tail bandage on top to lay it down. Once you've finished your tail and you've put the bandage on, then if you can just get someone else either to just come and help you by holding their arm underneath the tail, like this, and pulling the tail down, you need your big pair of scissors here, you're just going to straighten the end off. So just pull the tail down and you're going to cut it roughly six inches below the point of the hop. Now, I actually take mine to the chestnut. I think that's a very good indicator of how long the tail wants to be. So, someone arm underneath the tail, pulling all the hair down so that you get it all straight and level. And then, when you're down there, nice and straight, slip the end. You can do this with the clippers. You can actually get a better finish with the clippers but just take the ends off and then when you let the tail go it will hang quite level so that was Jumbo's tail which was a pulled tail which we've now tidied up by the um, traditional pulling method now we've come back to Larry and we're going to do exactly the same with his tail and end up with a pulled tail but I'm going to do it with the thinning scissors so if you have a horse that perhaps won't allow you to pull his tail or you have a full tail that you want to end up pulled very very quickly then this is an alternative method of doing it right so we're going to carry on 
ex exactly the same as we did when we pulled the tail, but we're going to snip with the scissors. So starting from the side at the top, we're just going to go in and snip and move, snip and move, and then comb all the loose hair out. And already you can see that's starting to take shape. I have seen people take clippers to a horse's tail and shave them up the side. It really does look false and hard and not very nice at all. Much more subtle and um, dignified to try and do this with the scissors. Again, don't keep snipping in the same place. Move your scissors down all the time and then comb out the hair that you've cut and snip and move and snip and move all the way down. I'm just collecting all the hair that I snip off in a bucket on the floor. Just keep it out of the way. You can see the shape of the tail starting to show now. And then when the hair gets a little bit shorter, if you put the comb in, and lift the hair up and you can get all the ends off. Put the comb in, lift the hair up. And the same sort of method really that you'd use to do the feathers down the back of the legs if they were at all objectionable to you using the Says, uh, the clippers. And then there you can see we've got one side finished and the other side we haven't started on or touched at all. And you can see how the tail lies nice and close and we haven't pulled a single hair out. We've done it all with the scissors. And when we finish the other side, you'll see the overall effect. It'll look exactly the same as if it had been pulled. So there we are now. That's just about finished. It's taken all together about 10, 15 minutes just to do that from start to finish. And it looks virtually the same as one that's been pulled and without any pain for Larry. And now, in true Blue Peter fashion, here is one I made earlier. We're just going to go through the trimming of the whiskers, the eyelashes, the ears and the top notch up there. Um, the reason that we do it is purely cosmetic, just to uh, create a finer, sharper line on the head if you're going to go and do any showing. Um, I've actually been trimming whiskers off for years and people do say that they need their whiskers um, for protection and to find things to eat. But 
I've never had one yet that's come to any sort of harm through having his whiskers shaved off. So we're going to use the little um, wire-free clippers with a rechargeable battery. They're very quiet um, and they're ideal just for small jobs around the head and ears or for anything that's a little bit more sensitive. So if we just put a little bit of oil on the end of the blade before we start. Switching them on, They're very quiet, almost like a razor really. I'm just taking off all the whiskers around the mouth. Just taking them up all around the nose, trying not to take too much coat with them. In the summer you won't, there won't be a lot of coat, but if you do this in the winter and they've got a bit more winter coat, you just have to be a bit careful that you don't take all the coat off with them. Right the way around, underneath the chin. Again, if your horse is uh, a little bit anti to anything that makes a noise, you won't be able to, to use anything like this in which case you'd probably have to go around each individual whisker with a pair of sharp scissors or you'd have to leave them on. And now the eyebrows. Just very carefully them off and underneath you open the top lid and just gently in there with the clippers. He's such a good boy. And around the other side. Push up the bottom lid. Very gently. Good boy, Larry. So we're going to do the ears next. We're only going to take off the outside edge just to tidy up the line of the ears and a little bit from inside at the tip of the ears just to, again, to neaten that up. You don't need to take anything out from inside the ear here where all this tufty stuff is because that does serve some form of protection. It stops all the dust and flies and debris getting into their ears and causing problems. So we're just going to take the outside edge and a little bit from the top. And the other ear.
that's the two ears done. And then we're just going to do the bridal patch at the top here. Um, always be very careful not to overdo this. Every time you do it, just keep as close to the previous um, edge as you can. If you take a few more hairs every time before you know where you are, your mane's going to be down here. So just very carefully. So we've taken off the bridle patch up there. It's just where the width of the bridle sits on the top of the head, just to give it a neater finish. And so you've got an edge there for when you plait your mane and tail. So that's the trimming around the head. And now we're going to move on and do trimming of heels and the backs of the legs. going to move on to trimming of heels and the backs of the legs. Um, we've got here a selection of clippers depending on the size of the animal and the amount of hair that they've got on their legs. Um, we've got everything here from a small battery controlled um, cordless clipper which runs quite quietly. Um, we'll run for about 70 minutes once it's fully charged. Ideal for trimming um, ears, eyes and nose um, and anything. If you haven't got a lot of hair, it wouldn't want to be doing too heavy a job, but it's ideal for just everyday tidying up. And then the middle-sized clippers, the wren, a little bit more substantial um, with a movable plate on the clipper which can either be up close, very much into the skin, or move out to get a longer uh, clip and catch with the lock. So I'll show you how to move that in and out when we actually get into doing the clipping. And then you have the bigger everyday clippers if you've got something with very hairy legs that you need to get into, um, they've actually got on a pair of A2 blades, a little bit more noisy than the um, handheld ones, the cordless ones. We've got an ordinary set of A2 blades on here which would, you wouldn't use for normal clipping. Um, Woolsey actually make a special set of blades, A7 blades, which have a much broader tooth for trimming of very hairy legs, so you wouldn't get such a, a fine finish. Um, they take the hair off a lot longer than the ordinary A2 blades would. But for the purposes of trimming today, we're just going to use the little wren clippers. Um, as we would go through, when we do the clipping video, I'm going to run through all the safety aspects of everything with it, how to maintain your clippers, how to look after them, when to have them serviced, when to have the blades sharpened. But just for today, we just go through the basics. I've taken my leather boots off and put rubber boots on. In an ideal situation, you you perhaps like to tie your horse up on rubber mats as well just for the safety angle of it. Um, not everybody has them but they are a lot more popular these days than they used to be. And also make sure that um, where the plug goes into the mains that you have a circuit breaker fitted um, just in case of accidents. But always be aware when you're using any kind of electricity that your horse doesn't stand on it. 
you must keep your wires well out of the way. I've put some protective clothing on just to keep the hair from your clothes and using the little wren clippers I've got the blade full out at its furthest extent and I've applied a few drops of oil to the blade and what we're going to do is just run the clippers up the back of the heel and you can see all this feather starting to grow and take it all away going in from the bottom and working our way up and I will actually take this up around the inside here to the chestnuts at the top but you'll see as I go it's not always necessary to go that far up but just to tidy up these whiskery bits we'll take that off as well today you may be if your horse hasn't got a lot of feather if you've got more of a, a thoroughbred leg with just a little bit of hair here you can get away with just running one line up the back and fading it out up to the back of the knee. If your horse hasn't got a very good conformation uh, in its leg, say it was a little bit over at the knee or back at the knee, then it's not perhaps as, as advisable to take the clip too far up because you'll only accentuate that fault. So we'll, we'll put the clippers on and get going. So taking it in from the bottom, following the line up of the leg. And up the back of the knee. Always make sure that when you start doing any sort of trimming that your horse's um, coat is absolutely dry. You won't be able to do this if your horse has got wet, hairy legs. You will actually see where the line is to take this trim, where it actually fades from ordinary coat into the coarser feather hair. So you just blend it in. So just going to put a little bit of oil on the clipper. Always give your clippers a clean at frequent intervals. Get the little brush that comes with them. And get all the hair out. And then just a couple of drops of oil before you carry on. The more you oil your blades, the longer they're going to last you. About once every five minutes, just a couple of drops of oil on the blade. And run it through. If you have any any oil that runs off the back. It should, it, it, it's non-toxic, it won't hurt the horses. Just wipe it off with your fingers and start again. And there we go. If you just look round the front of his foot here, because Jumbo is Irish draft, he's, he's got quite hairy feet. Um, with the little wren clippers, you do you are supplied with a 
a clip-on um, extension. If you slide that on to the front of the blade, it will now actually take a much longer clip. You've, you've lengthened the width of the blade. So it will now just take a little bit of this hair off. Rather than taking it close as we've done with the heels, we're just going to thin that out and tidy that up. So another little drop of oil in there. And again, it's in from the bottom and up. And you'll see that this blade doesn't actually take the hair right to the skin, but tidies up there. You can see the difference. It leaves a more natural finish with a little bit of length to the hair, but removes all the unsightly feathering. So taking that round, all the way round the foot, There we go. So there you can see the difference between the one that I've done with the clippers and the one that hasn't been done yet. And quite a considerable difference, but very natural finish. It doesn't look as though it's been clipped. Now we've done the front foot, we're going to move back and do a back foot. The same um, principle, again, take the hair off from the back, around the back of the heel and up. And I will actually take this right up to the hock. He's quite hairy there, hairy and wiry. So we're going to take this all the way up, take all these whiskers off, tidy the back of the leg up and then put the thinner on the front of the blade and do the same with the front of the back feet as we did with the front of the front feet. And the back feet, you, you've got the same sort of shape so you should be able, as long as your horse stands still, be able to get the same finish. So I'm going to put another bit of oil on the clippers, clean off the hair. of drops of oil on the blades. And here we go.
your flippers change tone like that, it's just a little bit of overload. So pull them out and start again. Don't force them into the hair if they can't cope with it. So now we've done the back of the heel without the um, thinning blade on the front of the clipper. So I'm just going to re-oil the clippers, give them a clean, put the thinner on and just trim off the front of the foot there. So we've put the trimmer on the front of the clippers and now we're just going to run up through the hair here. There we go. As you can see, Jumbo was very cooperative about having the clippers around his legs and being, us, being around on the floor with him. Um, obviously, if your horse is not quite so cooperative, you have to be a little bit more careful and uh, use another method to do them. But if they're good and they're, they're quite happy about you being down there, it does make a very good finish on a leg. So that's the end of our trimming video for today. Um, the next one we'll be dealing with clipping in its entirety. So we'll see you next time. Enjoy your horses. <laughs>